Coastlines are irregular. Sculpted by the forces of nature, there are no straight lines, no smooth curves, and nothing stays the same for long. Because of this, coastlines can be pretty difficult to measure. The biggest problem comes from the unit used to measure. Let's use New Guinea as an example and start with units roughly 500 kilometers long. Surrounding the island, you can clearly see it's not going to be a very accurate measurement, but we'll end up getting 6 units, or 3,000 kilometers as a result. Okay, now let's cut the units in half and try again. Surrounding the island this time, okay, it definitely looks better, but still nowhere close to accurate. Once we're all done, we've measured the coastline at 3,750 kilometers, 750 kilometers more than last time. Half the unit size again, and what do you know, we have a coast that's 4,125 kilometers long, and yet we're still nowhere close to a perfectly accurate measurement. I hope you're noticing the trend by now. With each smaller unit of measurement, the larger our measurement becomes. This happens because the closer you look, the more intricate the coastline becomes. That increased complexity means more coastline to measure. It's almost like measuring a fractal, where the closer you look, the more there is to see, indefinitely. You can go all the way down to the atoms making up the coastline, which comes with its own set of problems. I'm not going to get into it, this is supposed to be simply put, but measuring the actual distance between two atoms isn't as straightforward as it sounds either, for a variety of reasons. But if you did this, the measurement would begin to approach infinity. I said almost like a fractal, however, because, well, measuring the coastline is actually a bit more complicated. Now, we need to take a step back and remember that the sea is not static. The tide comes in and goes out and simultaneously goes out and comes in on the other side of the world, twice every day. The coastline even varies second to second as waves crash on shores and then recede. Each wave moves the sands and erodes parts of the beach, physically changing what the coastline is, which might seem small until you remember we need to use as small of a unit as possible to get the most accurate measurement. Even if we could freeze the ocean or, you know, just take the average between the high and low tides, we'd still have issues like like the river problem. What's the river problem? Well, where exactly does a river end and the ocean begin? Is this the coastline, or is this the coastline? Or this, or this, or this? This might seem small, but when the coastline looks like this, it becomes a big issue. Other problems are even more meticulous, like exactly where does the land end and the water begin? How wet does the sand need to be for it to be considered part of the ocean? Do lakes count towards a coastline of a country? Yeah, geographers actually like to argue about these things. But I hope you enjoyed this quick explanation. By the way, if you're curious, Wikipedia says New Guinea's coastline is 5,152 kilometers long, another thousand kilometers longer than we measured. If you liked this video, how about giving it a like? If you have any questions, I read the comments, so leave them there. And if you'd like to see more, why not subscribe? I'll be back next week with another video. Thanks for watching.